Hey everyone, I'm Deborah Johnson. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me here again. Um, so I've been in prayer and I, I've been asking God, you know, what do you want me to share with um, the people via my blog and also on YouTube? And a topic that he's continued to place on my heart this month is the word hope. Um, I know that a lot of us have probably been through seasons of disappointment, um, seasons of feeling let down, feeling like, okay, God, you said something, but it hasn't happened yet. It's not happening the way that I expect or the timing that I expect. Um, and sometimes because of those things, it can kind of cause us to lose hope. It can kind of cause us to be in a season of just feeling hopeless. And um, so I just want to encourage you all. That's why the title of this topic of this video is called Hope Now. Um, I want to encourage you to hope in the Word of God, to hope in the promises of God, and to believe the things that He said. So this video is going to be very brief. I'm just going to share what God um, laid on my heart to say, and then um, I'll be out of your way. So personally, I've been through a major season of just feeling kind of hopeless. Um, it happened a few years back. I expected God to do certain things. You know, God spoke many words concerning myself my husband and our marriage and things that he would do in our lives and i knew within my spirit that you know god was going to do certain things and they did not happen in the timing that i thought it was going to happen it didn't happen the way that i thought it was going to happen in fact things almost got worse it seemed um i don't know if you've been there where like you're expecting the promises of god and god is saying all these things but instead of things getting better things get worse so i, I went through that and it was so harsh to the point where um i experienced just hopelessness to the point where it turned into like a, a, a kind of like a depression and it took me a while to get out of it and even um, as things began to progress and um, things got better because of the weight of that that season that time because of just what I felt and kind of feeling almost abandoned by God and kind of feeling forgotten even though I know that he didn't forget me it caused me to kind of like to bring down my expectations, to bring down my hope. And um, after that season, when God would say certain things, I'd be like, okay, we'll see, you know, just like kind of putting up a barrier to protect myself from being hurt or being disappointed again. And so I've been there, um, I can definitely relate. And I really believe that right now God is saying like hope again, you know, hope in my word, hope in my promises, hope in the things that I've said to you. Um, so I'm just gonna share a few Bible verses and a few things and then, um, That'll be it, and I really pray that it encourages you. So Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So what has God told you, you know? Um, go back. What I do is when God gives me a word, like I write it down. When he gives me a dream and it's prophetic, I write it down, whether it's for myself or for someone else. But especially when it's for me, I write it down and I meditate on it. And I even war with it. I believe somewhere in um, First or Second Timothy, Paul is telling Timothy to war with the prophetic words that you've received because life is full of sorrows. You know, you're going to go through things. You're going to go through ups and downs. And sometimes the trials that you go through causes you to forget about the word of God. It causes you to forget about his promise. Promises. Um, so I encourage you, what has God said to you? And know that if God spoke it, if it really came from God, it's going to come to pass. It doesn't matter what things look like. It doesn't matter how bad things are getting. It doesn't even matter how you feel. God's word is going to come to pass. He's not a man that he should lie. When he speaks, um, when he speaks, his word is so powerful that it begins to, it begins to manifest. Um, and sometimes the reason why and I know I've been there. The reason why we get disappointed or discouraged is because, you know, God says something and we think, okay, it's going to happen at this time. Or we just know that, okay, God is going to do something. And then we think, okay, by this age, by this time, it's going to happen. And then it doesn't happen the way that we think. And then we're like, man, God, you know, this didn't happen. And we get discouraged and we get all, you know, just like low in our spirit. And God is like, <laughs> yes, I said it, but your timing is not my timing, you know, and we have to really ask God, Lord, like, what is the timing for this? And sometimes he may not tell you, but don't put your hope in how you think it's going to be. Don't put your hope in the way that you think that thing is going to come to pass. Put your hope in what God said, you know, be open to the fact that God's ways are higher than our ways. And sometimes the way that he wants to bring certain promises to, to pass is not the way that we think. Um, so God is not a man that, you, that he should lie and you can hope meaning you can eagerly desire and expect that what God has said to you will happen. Um, and you also have to, one thing that I've learned in my own journey, you also have to like test 
every single word, every single spirit, every single prophetic word. You have to evaluate the source of it because we can, there's a such thing as false prophecy. There's a such thing as a false word. And sometimes people will prophesy what's in your own spirit. You know, for example, I'm just using it as a general example. If you want to get married, you want a husband or you want a wife, if you want it bad enough, sometimes people can pick up what's in your spirit and um, you'll think it's a prophecy, but and they might think it's a prophecy, but it's not. And that's why you always have to check your own heart. Whatever you want, a lot of times the enemy is able to get you, you know, or you can make it happen. Sometimes you want something so bad. Sometimes you believe that God has said something so bad that you're doing things in your flesh to make it happen. And then when it doesn't happen, you get disappointed, you know. Um, a lot of our disappointment sometimes comes be because we've expected, we put our hope in things that God never said. We've said or we've convinced ourselves that God said this when he never said it, you know. So Isaiah 55 11 says that the words that come out of God's mouth come to pass. Not a false prophet, not out of your own dream. Sometimes we can dream out of our spirit. We can have visions. We can hear a voice out of our own desires. So you have to test every spirit. And what I do is whenever I get a prophetic word, God, I need your confirmation. Either it's already going to be confirmation for something that God has told me or after after I receive it, God is going to give me confirmation. You know, um, when God speaks, he always confirms. He always backs it up. It's not just a blank statement like, for example, or oh, you're going to law school. For me, I know God has never told me that. So if someone were to come to me with that, it'd be like, where is this coming from? It, it seems like it was just pulled out of nowhere. Um, you know, and if God says that, if he's changing my direction, if he's changing my course, he's going to give me confirmation. I'm not just going to believe it right away because I want to test the spirit, you know. So test the spirit and know that if God really said it, if he even has to ask God for confirmation, do that. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying God, you know, this is what I believe. This is what someone said to me via you. They said it was you. Um, please show me. Is this you or is this not? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so test the source of the word. It's very important. Um, shake off disappointment from past seasons. Shake off disappointment from past seasons. I can testify to this. Um, like I shared, I went through a season of hopelessness and it was kind of like a, a depression, a mild depression. And when that season passed and other things began to happen, it was almost like, man, okay, God, you're doing this, but let me not get my hopes up because what if this happens again? And I still had the residue of the disappointment. I still had the residue of the letdown in my spirit to the point where when God was bringing something new, I did not have a heart to fully receive it. I didn't have a heart to fully expect it because I was still dealing with hopelessness from the past season. So shake off the disappointment of the past season. Um... Shake off the doubt, the fear, the unbelief, and believe. Put your hope in the fact that what God has promised will come to pass. Um, holding on to past disappointments can prevent you from receiving the word of God. Holding on to past disappointments. And I know, um, I've even heard stories of people who, you know, they believed that something was going to happen, um, whether it was God or, or it wasn't, and it didn't happen. And it kind of led them down a path of like, they got so upset and discouraged with God that it led them down a path of eventually like disbelieving in God altogether. Like pretty much being an atheist or, or agnostic, you know? And that's why, like I said, it's important to test the source of it. Every dream that you have is not from God. Every vision, every word that you hear in your own spirit or that you receive from someone else is not from God. God has given us the spirit of discernment, the gift of discernment, you know? Discern everything, test everything because... It's dangerous when you receive a word from someone or from your own self and you think it's God and it's not God. That thing, that thing can lead you down a very dangerous path. It can lead you down a path of, you know, go, doing things or trying to make things happen that God never said. It could waste a lot of time, you know. So allow God to show you, allow God to reveal to you what's from him and what isn't. And shake off the past disappointment so that when God does begin to speak, when he does begin to do certain things, you'll know and you'll be able to receive. You'll be in a position of just expectation, you know. Expect the promises of God to come to pass. Um, when you have disappointment from past seasons, it can lead to bitterness, hardness of heart. Right. And it can lead to total disbelief, unbelief in God altogether. So let it go. If you're dealing with disappointment from a past season, if you're dealing with hopelessness, even depression, let it go. Shake it off. Like ask God, pray to God, Lord, take the chains off of me. 
I don't want to be fearful that, you know, oh, God is going to say it and it's not going to come to pass. I don't want to be afraid to step out on the things that you said because I'm still, you know, thinking about what happened yesterday. You know, ask God to, to break it off of you because it's going to hinder you from going forth. Um, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 is one of my favorite verses. And this verse right here, like God used it in my life um, in that season. He had me to continue to meditate, meditate, meditate on it. So Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 says... Um, Hope is an anchor for the soul. And you can read it, you read the full verse, but it pretty much says that hope is an anchor for the soul. So when you think about an anchor, an anchor is used to pretty much hold to hold a ship or a vessel, a um, sea vessel by the shore to keep it from being swayed, to keep it from being moved by the water, to keep it from going ad um, going adrift. So when you hope in God, hope in his, his written word first and foremost, the written word of God, when you have a hope in the written word of God, when false doctrine comes your way, when false teaching comes, when false spirits come with different types of things your hope in salvation in Christ your hope in the gospel your hope in Jesus Christ is going to keep you it's going to anchor you so that you won't be swayed and it's the same thing with when you receive a rhema word from God when you receive a prophetic word your hope in what God has said will, will anchor you you know it'll keep you from being um drifted um drifted by different things so when I was going through that season and um to be honest I just wanted to be like forget it <laughs> Jesus, I believe in you, of course, but, you know, every prophetic word that you've spoken, forget it because it was just so hard and it was a very, like, heavy season um, on me and I wanted to just not believe altogether, but when God began to remind me of his word, he began to remind me of the things that he has said, it anchored me, you know, even when that little bit of unbelief wanted to come in, come in, even when that little bit of, you know, don't hope, you know, you're disappointed from the past season when it's tried to come in, it anchored me, you know, and so as I meditated on this word and as I meditated on the prophetic words that God has spoken, it anchored me in God. It let me know, okay, God, you said this, you're going to do it, you know? We have a God that, that he doesn't lie. He's not just speaking just to speak. Every word that he speaks is for a purpose. And God even gives us words. He tells us things in advance so that we can have hope, so that we have something to look forward to, and so that we have direction, you know, we so that we know which um, way we're going. Um, so our hope, our confident expectation in God cannot break down or slip. It's strong and it will keep us. When you hope in God, that hope in Jesus Christ will keep you. You know, it'll anchor you in him. Um, in Exodus chapter 6, when Moses was sent to the children of Israel to tell them that he had come to pretty much deliver them out of bondage, the children of Israel were so used to being bound. They were so used to being in slavery. I think they were in slavery for many, many years. Um, I don't remember the exact amount when uh, Moses came. But they were so used to being bound that when God sent Moses to them to deliver them, they could not believe it. Think about it. They were in slavery for all these years. They knew from the past, um, from through past, past prophets that God was going to send a deliverer. God had spoken words over Israel that he would make them like the sands on the seashore. He said that he would prosper them. He said that he would make his um, their enemies, put their enemies under their feet. He's spoken all these things, but they went through a season of bondage. They went through a season of captivity to the point where when God's promise came, when the prophetic word, when the deliverer came, they were like, you know what? No, we've been so bound that we can't even, we can't even receive you. You know, and I don't know if there's someone out there that's been so bound, so pressed down, so overcome and disappointed, so hopeless, so depressed. And when you think about depression, it has a lot to do with hopelessness, not believing um, that something is going to happen, not thinking that you have nothing to look forward to. You know, they were so bound. They felt like they had nothing to look forward to. They felt like, where is God? You know, God spoke all these things, but he has us here suffering to the point where when God brought Moses, they couldn't receive him. Um, and that verse says in Exodus 6, 9, it says, So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Have you become too discouraged by the brutality or by, you know, the, the hardness of your season? Have you become too discouraged by different situations? Um, have you refused to believe anymore? There are so many people, believers, Christians, who are still serving in ministry. They're doing all these things. They're... They still profess Christ, but deep down inside, they've lost hope. They feel like they have nothing to look forward to. And I believe that this word, and when you go before God in prayer, that it's going to break the chains, that it's going to break the hopelessness. It's going to cause depression to loose you. Amen? So have you lost all hope? Have you refused to believe anymore? 
Have you gotten to the point where you don't even want to receive, you don't even want to hear any prophetic word from God? Have you gotten to the point where you've even discounted prophecy? There's some people who don't believe that God speaks, that God, um, that God sends prophetic words, or that He even has prophets because they've seen um, that gift used in the wrong way. Have you gotten to that point where you don't even believe anymore? If you're at that place, I encourage you, go before God in prayer and ask Him to break it. Ask Him to break it because it's, believe it or not, even though outwardly you may seem like you're doing good, it's holding you down. It's preventing you from receiving what God wants to receive in you. And it also hinders your, your ministry. Like, how can you effectively minister when you've lost all hope? You can't. You can't. Um, Romans chapter 4 verse 18 says in the Amplified Version, In hope against hope, Abraham believed that he would become a father of many nations. In hope against hope, when there was no hope at all, <laughs> when there was no hope at all, when everything looked like it was dead, when everything in the natural looked like it was impossible, in hope against all hope. Um, I think Abraham was well over 100 and Sarah was, I believe, 95 at the time. In hope against all hope, her womb looked completely dead. But Abraham chose to still believe the word of God. How much do you believe in God? How much do you believe first in his logos written word? And how much do you believe in his rhema word to you? How much do you believe that when God speaks a word, it will not return void? Will you choose to have hope even when everything seems dead around you? Will you choose to still believe in the word of God? Or are you going to operate in fear? Are you going to operate in unbelief and doubt? I believe that we're in a season of harvest. I believe that for many in the body of Christ, that God is about to manifest many of his promises. I believe that we're in a now season when God is saying, now my word will come to pass. It shall not delay any longer. But some people are still holding on to the disappointment of the previous season to the point where they cannot even receive what God wants to do now. You cannot receive what God wants to do now because you're still, up, you're still holding on to disappointment. You have fear, doubt, and unbelief. You're afraid to hope. And I've come to encourage you, you can hope now. Hope in the word of God now. It shall come to pass because our God is not a man that he should lie. And the um, NLT version of Romans 4.18 says, Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. <laughs> That's faith right there. He was the father of faith. Even when there was no reason to hope, Abraham kept hoping. Will you keep hoping even when there was, there's no reason to hope? Even though you may not know when or how it's going to happen, even if you go through trial after trial tomorrow, even if you go before God and he shakes off, he, he breaks off the disappointment, but you still continue to go through and you still have to wait. Will you still hope? Will you still believe in the word of God? That's what God wants from you. He wants you to believe. Um, in our greatest source of hope, if Jesus Christ said that he's coming back, if he said that he's coming back and surely it, it will come to pass, how much more can we believe the promises that he's made to us here on this earth? If he has a heaven for us, if he's promised a home for us, a, a, a mansion for us in heaven, streets of gold, pearly gates, if he's promised all these things, if he said that he's coming back and he has a, a place for us in eternity, how much more can we believe the promises that he's given us in this earth? Think about it. If he's spoken these words out of his mouth, would he deceive us? You have to go back and remind yourself of who God is. He is who he says that he is. Every single word that's written in the Bible, every single word that he speaks to you that is a sure word from heaven, it's yes and amen. It shall come to pass. Be encouraged. God's word will come to pass. You can expect with confidence that he will not let you down. You can expect with confidence that he will not let you down. So I encourage you, pray, and I'm, um, I encourage you to pray. And I'm also praying for those that are dealing with grief of disappointment. Because when I went through that season of hopelessness, it was almost like a grief. Like, I'm grieving, I guess, the loss of my expectations not coming to pass. Or, you know, for me, even um, certain words were spoken. And they said, by this time, this will happen. By this time, and it did not happen. And I, I learned in that... I learned in that situation that um, be careful when people put a time limit on prophetic words because if if that time passes and it didn't come to pass, what I have to do, I have to actually go to that person and say, hey, this is what you said. It didn't happen. You might want to check that because it can cause a lot of damage to people. But um, 
I went through grief of disappointment and God had to break it off of me. You know, I went through the sorrow of just like, man, like we're here, we're in this situation, I'm in this situation and God has said this, but it just looks absolutely dead. Everything that I try, everything that I, you know, try to do to get out of this, everything that, you know, every time I hope and I just expect and I believe things get even worse and it was just a grieving season almost. And um, God has to break it off of me. So I'm praying for those who are dealing with the grief of disappointment. Even those who may have, um, you know, gone through a loss in their family. Gone through a loss. Um, maybe you've lost a family member or a close friend. And just the grief of that, you know. I, and sometimes even that alone. Or grief of losing a job or losing a home. Or just losing something that's valuable to you. That alone can create disappointment. That alone can create hopelessness. So I'm praying for God to heal you and to deliver you from those things. And, um... If you're still experiencing sorrow from the past season, ask God to heal you so that you can receive what he has for you now. Be open and honest with God. Like I had to tell God, Lord, <laughs> I, at this point, I'm just like, I'm kind of iffy because I want to believe. But at the same time, this situation that I'm still presently in is so, like, it's depressing. <laughs> it just, it's just so sad. Like, it was really hard. It was one day I'll probably share the full testimony, but it was really hard. But I know that God also allowed me to walk through that so that I can encourage other people so that I know what it feels like to have a loss a grief because sometimes we think loss and grief is just like oh you know somebody died but you can have a grief of I, I remember when I was going through a season of God telling me pretty much the career path that I had chosen was not what he wanted I went through years of grieving it and I didn't even realize it until God showed me that you're still grieving this loss you're still grieving this thing that you had for your life you planned for your life all these years since you were little you thought this was going to happen and it, and it didn't happen and not only are you grieving but you're resentful of me you resent me for not um allowing it to happen but he had to remind me that i have greater plans for you and he had to i had to really just be open and honest with god i had to be raw you know let god heal me um just expose myself before the lord and sometimes that's what we have to do like you may not have someone that you can talk to your friends and your family may not fully understand but i encourage you to just go before god and expose yourself before him tell him exactly if you're angry if you you know you want to hit something if you feel over like however you feel be honest with god you know he's god there's nothing that catches him by surprise and he knows how you feel before you even tell him but he wants you to tell him for yourself you know so that you can just release it um ask god to heal your heart and ask him to help you to hope again hope again hope now ask him to help you to hope again and i really pray that whoever listens to this whether now or in the future that like hope will begin to arise in you you know that he would begin to resurrect your hope i believe that he will begin to resurrect your hope and resurrect the dead promises that, the promises that you thought were dead you know because some promises you have to put in the work if god told you for example that you're going to be a business owner you have to do what you got to do to make that business you know thrive just obey him as far as the timing and what you need to do but sometimes because of even disappointment we don't we don't step out in faith you know we don't step out and do what god told us because we just think it's not gonna work it's not gonna happen we're afraid we've had past experiences where we tried and it didn't happen and we're just disappointed and that's why he told me to um make the title of this video hope now like hope now try again you know do it if god said it get up and do it if god already gave you the green light get up and do it people are waiting on your obedience you know people are going to be blessed by your obedience um and I mentioned that sometimes unmet expectations come from misunderstanding God's timing. So it's important to ask God, if God told you, I'm going to have you to do A, B, C, D. Ask God, God, what is the timing? Is it now? Because sometimes God will tell you something contrary to popular belief. And it may not be for right now. You know, God may tell you, hey, I want you to start a ministry. But that does not mean right now. It could mean that he's telling you so that you prepare yourself. So that you allow him to fill you. So that you get in your word. Like, there's a time for everything. And sometimes when we try to move outside of God's time, we meet all these blood, um, roadblocks. I'm sorry, roadblocks. And we're like, okay, God, why is this happening? Why is this happening? We get mad and we think we're doing something wrong. We think... You know, God hasn't blessed it. And God is like, I have it for you. It's just not time. You haven't sought me concerning the time. Um, so have confident expectation. Have hope. Position your heart to receive in this season. Position your heart by hoping again to receive what God has. Because I, I truly believe that when you have a heart ready to expect and to receive, then you have an ear 
open to hear what God has to say. As you begin to get on your face before him and seek him, he's going to begin to give you instruction and direction. But if your heart is closed off because you're hopeless and you're disappointed and you're depressed, you won't be in position to receive. You won't be in position to hear God. Um, so I want to encourage you, position your heart to receive from God. Position your heart to hear from him. So let hope arise. Let hope arise. You can believe the word of God. Ask God, let hope arise in me again. Resurrect my hope. Every part of me that's disappointed, you know, from different things like, God, I shake it off. I let it go. I trust you. I believe you. And sometimes you even need to ask God, God, why did this happen? Why did you allow this to happen this way? You know, what were you trying to do? Was it you? Was it the enemy? Some some things, some um roadblocks are the enemy and some is God because God is saying it's not time but if it's the enemy that's when you need to go into prayer fasting you know ask God for strategy because if he said it it's gonna happen and sometimes he'll allow the enemy to do certain things so that he can strengthen your faith and so that he can kind of make you resilient to push past the obstacles you know because sometimes we think God is gonna speak a word and it's just gonna drop in our laps and happen you know magically and it's not always that's not always the case sometimes you have to you have to put in the work, put in the effort to um, to do it. Some things are contingent on your obedience. You know, you have to obey God and do what he's, what he tells you to do. Like Abraham, God gave Abraham, you know, he said, I'm going to send you to an another land and I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And as Abraham walked out, as he walked out and obeyed God's word, every single step he took, God gave him more instruction, more direction. And Abraham made mistakes along the way, but he repented. And he continues to believe in God. So don't give up because things don't look like um, the way that you expect them or, or because things aren't working the way that you want. Just ask God for further instruction. Ask him for what he's doing. And the important thing is to really be in tune to the spirit of God. You know, because sometimes we think we know what we should do. And God is like, I'm going to sit here and wait until you come seek me again. I'm going to sit here and wait until you ask me what you want me to do, what, what I want you to do. Because right now you're moving in you, you know, so just really be in tune to the spirit of God. And I just want to, um, and this leads into the next video that I'm going to share that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And that's our greatest source of hope in this season. That's the greatest word um, that we can receive is that he's coming back, you know, and we have to put ourselves in position to hope in his return you know there are many things going on in the world many things that will cause you to be discouraged especially as believers we have many agendas being promoted um the church is being persecuted in different nations and it's going to eventually come to america but i want to encourage you hope in the fact that jesus christ is coming back and if you if you believe that he's coming back guess what you're going to prepare people you're going to tell people you're going to herald it through the streets you're not going to keep it to yourself so if you believe then you're going to put it into action. You're going to prepare yourself. You're going to position yourself as if Christ was coming back city. You're going to get your own house in order and you're going to tell other people to get ready. You're not going to be silent about him. Amen. So that's the word that I have for you today. I really pray that it encourages you all. I pray that it blesses you. If you're dealing with hopelessness, shake it off. Go before God in prayer. If you need to fast and pray, I'm telling you because it can be a hindrance to your walk. It can be a hindrance to how God wants to use you. Um, so thank you for watching me today. Thank you for watching this video. If you were blessed, um, please like, share, and subscribe. And if it bless you, please leave a comment so I know. Um, and you can follow me on social media at Instagram on at the handle heart of heart underscore of underscore worship and on facebook at the name deborah johnson also if you haven't done so already please follow my blog i share more on there and the word that i'm going to share on my blog next is called the promises of god are near he actually gave me a dream and i'm just going to kind of share what he um wants me to share about that and also i'm going to post a bible um bible studies post if you've been following my blog a bible studies post about um Bible verses for when you need hope. So if you're feeling hopeless, if this video really bless you, I'm going to put the link to that and everything else below so that you can read it and just find um, it's going to have Bible verses to just encourage you to, you know, have hope to believe in what God said, to believe that God is not a man that he should lie. Um, so you can find the links to everything below. And I look forward to the next video. Um, thank you for watching. Love you all and have a great day. Bye.